Hello, welcome to my channel. 25 years ago, I saw Andromeda for the first time in my life through a telescope. Since that day, I always wanted to buy myself a nice telescope which can be best used to view deep space objects, which means galaxies, nebulas, maybe some clusters, uh, and so on. And also, of course, if a telescope can handle deep space, it can probably handle very well the moon, the planets, and the sun with a nice sun filter. After a week of research, I focused and uh, decided on the Skywatcher Dobsonian 200p, means 200 millimeters of aperture. The aperture of a telescope is the most important thing. This means this big hole has 200 millimeters of diameter. The better the diameter, the more light you can gather. Without further ado, let's do some unboxing, which I actually did earlier today. The package itself arrived in two boxes. Let's open the OTA optical tube assembly first. Nicely packed and cushioned for transport. Two hundred millimeters aperture of the main mirror. Remember, never look at the sun directly. Let's see what else is inside the box. I will keep these for future transport. It was nice, there was a check manual with it. First, we have the 2 inch to 1.25 inch adapter. Some Allen wrench for collimation of the secondary mirror. Two inch extension tube. This seems to be the mount for the finder. One of the two eyepieces, 25mm superplossal, 52 degrees of apparent view. And also a 10mm one with the same apparent view. Time to have a look at the finder scope. I was pretty happy with the quality of this one. Let's have a closer look at the eyepieces. They are not bad, but I already got some Angel Eye eyepieces from AliExpress for $30 a piece and they are a lot better than these stock ones. I will be reviewing them at some point in the future.
The finder fits nicely with the mount. Now we are ready to assemble the Dobsonian base, which is where the name of the entire telescope, Dobsonian, comes from. Which is not an entirely correct thing to say. If you want to get more technical, the optical assembly tube, OTA, you know, the big cannon we saw earlier, actually has nothing to do with the Dobsonian base itself. It can be easily detached and mounted on a completely different type of mount. The base was invented in 1965 by a guy named John Dobson and has allowed amateur astronomers to enjoy big telescopes, especially heavy Newtonian reflectors like this one, without the complexity of mounting them on expensive equatorial mounts. A high quality equatorial mount that can handle such a heavy telescope can easily surpass the price of the whole telescope that we have here. Fun fact, the reflector telescope was invented by the big guy himself. Sir Isaac Newton over 350 years ago. To this day, it remains an excellent piece of technology. The design of the base is optimized for observing faint, deep sky objects such as nebula and galaxies. This type of observation requires a large objective diameter, meaning light gathering power of relatively short focal length meaning the tube is pretty short when compared to classic refractors of the same diameter. Those can be as long as 2 meters. This allows more portability for travel to less light polluted locations, which is very important for observing the deep sky faint nebulas and galaxies. In this case, as we saw previously, it has a diameter of 200 mm. This is also the reason why such a telescope is called an h in Dobsonian. 8 inches equals 203 millimeters. The diameter itself is usually called an aperture. It turns out this is exactly what I need for my telescope as my main interest are the deep sky objects and the ability to transport the telescope easily. The Skywatcher company was established in 1999 in Taiwan. These days the telescopes are, as pretty much everything else, manufactured in China. This of course guarantees the best price for the most value. At $500 you will not find a better telescope on the market with this aperture. I will be reviewing this telescope in full in one of my next videos. That's it. Hope you like this video, if you like it click like, click subscribe if you want to see what happens next. Next, couple of months from now hopefully, I'll do a review of the telescope, see how the moon, the sun, the planets look through it and again hopefully I may manage to catch a galaxy or two.